What up and welcome to Rama Screen YouTube channel and here's my review of Netflix new movie Borderless Fog aka Kabut Berduri. Let's rock this. Now as you all know I am Indonesian so as soon as I heard about this new movie that's coming to Netflix I just had to request the advanced screener because I've made a commitment to try and support and promote any content originating from my homeland. And now that I've watched this entire film, <sighs> I gotta say, unfortunately, Kabut Berduri, aka Borderless Fog, falls short by a mile. I don't wanna be too harsh because I really want you guys to check out any film or any show produced by Indonesian filmmakers. There are some talented storytellers over there whose work deserves to be seen and enjoyed by the masses. But in regards to this particular film, Borderless Fog, it's a hot mess. The mystery and the suspense are poorly structured. I mean, I get what they're aiming at, and to a certain extent, I know that they're trying to be all David Fincher-esque, but the narrative and the executions and especially the dialogues are painfully clunky and all over the place. The film follows Sanja, a detective from Jakarta who is assigned to investigate a series of gruesome murders impacting the indigenous Daya community in the border area of Indonesia, Malaysia on Borneo, Kalimantan. To solve this case, Sanja is forced to visit ghosts of the past and confront her own personal demons. One of the reasons I initially wanted to see this film is because it features Putri Marino, and I've been hearing about Putri for quite some time now. She seems to be the biggest, most popular thing to come out of Indonesia lately, and you may have recognized her from Cigarette Girl and The Big Four, both streaming on Netflix and both are widely well-received in Indonesia. So, I don't know, I guess she's like the equivalent of Florence Pugh in my homeland, or something like that. Putri's performance as the lead detective in Borderless Fog is actually one of the few points in this film that's pretty decent. Putri does a good job of embodying that tough, considerate cop who's also a bit in over her head because of her shady past and the small town secrets that this case holds. So the character herself is interesting. And Putri, with her cool sunglasses on, does her best to exude all those intuitions and vulnerabilities. You see, all of the pieces are in place. All of the elements are there. All of the supporting roles exist for a crime drama mystery to be effective. The problem is the script or the material that doesn't quite know how to make those elements work in tandem. And it keeps fumbling and fumbling in terms of the build-up and the character development. There's a lot of missed opportunities in the dynamics between Sanja and Luke Mansardi's character, Pancha. There could have been more friction and tension there between a dirty cop and a not-so-honest cop. But she keeps getting pulled away by the interactions with Thomas and Bujang all of which are half-baked at best. Credit where credit is due, the tone is consistently dark and gloomy. I really like the way they depict the animosity of Malaysian authorities versus Indonesian authorities. I wish they had leaned in more into that culture shock. The movie doesn't shy away from the simplicities of living in that region, and that's good. And the film terrifically incorporates a lot of the actual settings in order to create an ominous vibe and mood that's needed for this type of storytelling. Now, you can tell that the cinematography is inspired by some of the thrillers you've seen in the past, and so you gotta give them kudos for that effort, but some of the cutaways are baffling, and the editing is choppy, and some of the sequences are shot in wide angle, which decreases the film's cinematic value. Look, I'm not going to criticize the production's low budget because I am a big believer in you could make a movie by stretching any dollar you have. But there are better ways or better camera tricks to stage a car crash, for example, that would make it seem more immersive without having to resort to methods that come across as cheap. So yeah, overall I give Kabut Burduri, aka Borderless Fog, the rating of 2 out of 5. I'm still cheering for the director Edwin. I mean, again, the effort is there, 
but it just doesn't quite get there. You know what I'm saying? This is one of those cases where you got to keep trying and trying and trying again and again. So give it another old college try, Edwin. Did you see?